The BMW 120D, what do you reckon? Wow! <laughs> I think that's what that, you know, like, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, they're good. So in the last video, I introduced you to my new project, the BMW E82 135i. And as excited as I am to start modifying this car, I've learned from my past mistakes and I'm gonna get this car sorted mechanically before we start modifying it. So as I mentioned in the last video, the rocker cover is the first thing that I want to get sorted on this because it's causing excessive oil consumption, a smell in the cabin and smoke coming from under the bonnet which is not good. So that's the first job for today. So there's a whole load of stuff that we need to take off before we can get the rocker cover off to replace that gasket but it's more involved I think than it looks so I'm budgeting quite a bit of time for this and not assuming it to be a quick job. So we've got me and my main man Finn tackling this so uh, I suppose there's no point hanging around. Let's get straight on with it. That's right, we're going straight in at the deep end on this car and changing that rocker cover. For me, anyway, that's quite a big job. So the first thing to remove is the airbox, so a couple of Jubilee clips and a few push fit pipes, and we could slide that out. One slightly annoying thing I've found already about working on this car is because it's an inline six, that means that the two rear cylinders basically sit underneath the scuttle panel, which makes access a bit of a pain. So after that was removed and we gained a bit more access, we could take the four Allen head bolts out of the top of the engine cover and reveal the rocket cover that we're gonna be removing. Next up is the battery cables. I've already disconnected the battery in the boot at this point. Again, this just gives a little bit more access over the top of the engine. After that was removed, it was time for the most satisfying noise in the world, removal of the packet de bobines. Then off comes the wiring for the coil packs and the injectors. As a guide for doing this, I was watching a couple of American videos on YouTube and there was a few differences between the left-hand drive and the right-hand drive cars which made this a little more difficult, I'd say. So, now access was looking a bit better, we could start removing these little fuel lines which I then very professionally released all the pressure from. And once those were off, it was time just to whiz off the fuel rail. And next up, the two vacuum lines that run across the top of the engine. At least that's what I think they are. Here we go, problem number one. I've just snapped one of these vacuum lines, even though hopefully I might be able to find a replacement. It's bank holiday tomorrow, but hopefully it's just a, you know, I can use it as a pretty generic pipe and you know, still find a replacement. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, but uh, yeah, not ideal. Definitely not ideal. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, it may become a bit more apparent at this point that I am no professional mechanic. I am just winging it as I go and hoping for the best. At this point, everything that I needed to remove had been removed and everything that needed to be moved out of the way had been moved. So, it was time to start taking out the bolts for the rocker cover, which there was so many, it was ridiculous. But one by one, got them all out. So I'm now down to what I believe is the last three bolts before I can take the rocker cover off the car and replace that gasket. But I have come across a small problem which I may or may not be able to get around, but uh, yeah, I'll show you. So the last three I need to take off are this one here, here, and here. Now, all of these are 10 mils, but they need to be a super deep socket to get all the way down this here and then be able to remove you know, the nut. So, the 10 mil that is in my Halfords kit is not deep enough, but I've got one which is, which we bought in Monaco for replacing my Paquette de Bobines. But there is also a problem with this one because it needs to be able to fit in width down here too. So yeah, I'm gonna have to see if I can borrow something from someone or find another way to get this off. After messaging everyone in my phone book, my neighbor came through with a 10 mil which just did the job. So as soon as those were off, we could start wiggling off the rock cover. And just in the nick of time, Finn came in to celebrate the success. Get in! 
Yes, so we finally have the rocker cover off and it's easy to see why this would be leaking. It's got splits here, there and everywhere and is very kind of dry and brittle so look, it just snaps like that. It's, it's definitely past best. So after I'd removed the old gasket, it was time to clean up and inspect the rocker cover to make sure that there was no cracks in it. Apparently these are quite common to split, but thank God this one looked okay. So time for the new gasket to go on. So we then very carefully positioned the rocker cover back in place, making sure that we didn't fold the gasket or disturb it when reinstalling. Then with a bit of teamwork from my friend Liam, we were able to tighten those bolts up, reinsert the spark plug tubes and start refitting everything back to the car. So Liam talked the rocker cover to spec while I refitted all the fuel lines, making especially sure that these are properly tight because the last thing you want is fuel squirting everywhere when you start the car. Then it was time to refit all the electrical connectors for the coil packs and for the injectors and the earth too. So I'm now fixing some of the things that I broke when I changed the rocker cover gasket on my 135i and this is the first thing. So these are just some vacuum pipes I believe um, but they're actually quite different to what BMW have supplied me and I'm hoping this is okay. So these are the hoses I've broke which are quite stiff but to be honest with you that's half of the reason why they snapped but they're going in the bin and being replaced with this flexible vacuum hose. So fingers crossed that still works fine. So I'm trying my best to use mainly BMW genuine parts on this car because sometimes the aftermarket stuff can be a little bit iffy. And they supplied me with this flexible vacuum hose which I definitely paid over the odds for with it being a BMW part. If that's what they're going to supply, I'm sure it's up to the task, so it's dead easy just to push fit onto the connectors and bolt everything back up. Next up, it was back off of the scuttle panel for two reasons. One, I wanted to change another pipe that I broke at the back of the engine, and number two, I wanted to fit some new spark plugs while the engine was more accessible. And here is part number two. I think it's called a rocker cover breather pipe. Um, and again, it was just so brittle. When I touched it, there was a split in it and just decided to yank it off to be honest with you because I knew I was replacing it. So luckily this hose is quite accessible. It only goes from here to down here. And even though this hose is quite short, it's gonna go through a lot of heat cycles given the position that it's in, meaning that over time, it's gonna need replacing. So now we've got that done, the next job is the spark plugs. Now we've got the engine more accessible, having all the scuttle panel off, now seems the prime time to do this. And I want to thank one of my subscribers, I think his name is T Anon or something like that. Um, he mentioned that I'm going to need a different sort of socket in order to fit these and he's dead right. Luckily I've managed to borrow it from Mallory Performance and we can get this done. So it was back off with the Paquette de Bobines. If you don't know what I'm on about with that, you need to go back and watch the video where we did the road trip to Monaco. I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner now. Another little tip that I picked up was wrapping some tape between the socket and the extension to make sure that when you refit your new spark plug, you can still remove the socket without it getting stuck on there.
Okay, so I've now got all the old spark plugs out and the new ones in, and I'm pretty happy, I think, with the way they look. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments whether these are running rich or lean, I don't really know, but the good thing is they're consistent. There's not one that's looking particularly different to the others, so I think that's a good sign. And speaking of comments, I wanna thank you guys who all commented on the last video being helpful, trying to help me fix my 135i. I think I've managed to find the coolant leak and also found that my car is due a recall, which it hasn't been in for yet, so I've gotta thank you guys for that. And also, in the last video, I promised you guys if you got 300 likes on there, I would tell you how much I paid for it. And in three days, you guys have absolutely smashed it. And we're over 600 now. And the video is absolutely flying compared to my previous. So thank you very much. To fill you guys in, I've paid £6,900 for this non-category 120,000 mile 135i. And I think I got a pretty good price on it. But, you know, let me know what you guys think down below. But now it's time to see if all of my hard work is going to pay off. And if the car is going to start and run as it should after I've changed the rocker cover gasket and the other bits and bobs. So uh, yeah, let's get it back together. Seem like every cat ain't gotta maintain the cap. You can make change, don't change for that. Tell the whole truth, get paid for that. So the first thing to go back on was the air box with a brand new air filter in there. Cause niggas ain't really who they say on the outside. And then after shimmying the engine cover back into place, we can pop the four bolts back in for that. Niggas ain't really who they say on the outside around the city with my day one niggas I ain't gotta worry cause they A1 niggas and the final piece is the scuttle panel which is gonna be popping in with a new cabin filter as well big time niggas still humble in the hood gotta keep it positive on nothing but the good when I'm on vacation I'll be stunting like I should got a real queen falling she gon' stumble on the wood and I still be doing Bennett with my brother down and I know that if I got it I'ma cover them and I know that if I need it they gon' give it back gotta practice what you preach and I be Okay, so there is everything back together, I think, in the right place. The only bit that doesn't look right to me is the pollen filter here. Looks like I'm, I don't know if I'm missing a piece or something about it just doesn't look right. I'm going to check back on the footage from the start of the video and see if I've missed something or put something in the wrong place or whatever, but I'm sure that's a minor thing. So, next job now, let's see if it starts. Uh, if you was made for that, you gotta be who you really be shy from the inside. And there we have it, she's running like an absolute dream. There was a little misfire on tick over before, but that seems to have gone. So fingers crossed, that stays the way it is. Otherwise, it's probably an injector, which is gonna be a bit more expensive. And also, since my last video, I have managed to do this here. Just had a stone fly up on the dual carriageway and absolutely nail the windscreen, which has not only caused that crack there, but also a nice long one, which runs all the way along here. So yeah, that kind of sucks. So the next thing isn't really a mechanical problem, but it's more of an exterior niggle. My rear brake light has definitely, at the moment, got the London look. Get the London look. Get the London look. Even though I can't see it when I'm driving, I'm sure for the people behind me, it's properly irritating. So let's get that sorted. So I have picked myself up the finest eBay special center brake light, but this one is black compared to the standard red, which at first may look a little bit strange, but near the end of the project, it'll make a bit more sense. This was super easy to access, just a bunch of clips and two screws holding on the boot carpet and then you can get to the back of the light from the inside of the boot. Now surely this can't be factory, it looks like someone's tried to silicon this one in, it's... Alright, let's get it out anyway, that's awful. And this is where buying cheap eBay stuff bites you in the arse because the new brake light, the plug doesn't quite fit in it, I think there's some problem with the pins or something like that, so they're going to send me out a replacement anyway, but I had to pop this one in just for now. Then it was time for a trip over to Bertie's, my favourite northern mechanic, and he was going to check over the car for me to see exactly where all these leaks are coming from. So the first thing to do is to pressure test the coolant system to try and pinpoint exactly where that coolant leak's coming from. Sometimes with leaks it can be really hard to find exactly where in the car they're coming from because it just gets absolutely everywhere. So off with the under tray and then we can have a proper inspection to see where that is. Thank you. 
So we've just got the under tray off and first thing I notice is we've actually got down pipes on the car already which saves me an absolute ball ache job and as well as that we've also got a nice hefty intercooler so maybe this car's maxed already but it doesn't feel that fast so there's got to be an issue somewhere. So I suppose that's a bit of a win having those little extra bonus parts fitted already. Yeah, some I think more thumps. So some of you guys in the comments on the last video were 100% right. There is definitely some damage on the water pump causing that to leak. It's not gushing out, but you know, it's definitely coming out at a fair rate. So after cleaning up the engine and ordering a water pump, it was time to have a look at the rest of the car. Although there was a few bits and bobs which are showing their age, Bertie's general opinion is the car is actually pretty good. Rock pump is dry though, mate. Yes, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. Yeah. I'm stuck. <laughs> see what comes up. And then it was time to plug her in and see what fault codes have been stored on the car. It turned out there's a slight issue with the oil level sensor, so I've ordered a new one of those. And also the brake pad wear sensors needed resetting, so we did that whilst checking over the rest of the car. And then the final thing was checking why the aircon's not working, which of course there's a leak somewhere. So we've now got Bertie's opinion on the car and he seems to think it's pretty decent. There's one person left who needs to see it. Got a new car, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Come check it out. So a BMW 120D, what do you reckon? Wow! <laughs> Amazing. How many horsepower? I think it's 80 something. 300, 300 horsepower. <laughs> 135i, N54. Yeah. Loads better than anything you've got. Yeah. It looks like a, uh, a diesel. It's got diesel wheels on it. Diesel wheels. Yeah. Check out the brakes. Look at them bad boys. Brakes. It's got brake pads on. Yeah, that's normally a good start. <laughs> Check out what tires, I did. Tires are... They're fresh, they are. Yeah. Straight from Avon. Not bad. Did this the other day. Oh, wow. <laughs> How did you do that? Uh, you looked at it. <laughs> How did you actually do that? Stone chip. Did it come like that? No, no, no. Wow. Literally just did it the other day. Interior. Have a sniff. See if it smells better than the 350. It smells like old BMW. Oops. Yeah, it's a... These are not like the same seats as like the 140, are they? They're, they're literally they're no changed. different, are they? Yeah, they're not really The whole interior is like pretty much the same. Even that's like the same as like the 140. Yeah. They don't really change them, do they, really? No. Um, Armors. Oh, same as a 140i. Works, yeah. A 2018 140i. The same. I've actually fitted a 140i armrest. Wow. <laughs> I, bet he, I bet he could put a new steering wheel on it. Probably could, yeah. Probably even could. the even that looks the same. It's literally there's nothing different apart from the, the 140s come with two CD player knobs. <laughs> <laughs> and the start stop's a bit different. Yeah, and I don't think the 140s have moss growing in the CD player. No, mine had that though. What moss? In the. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's moss, it's just out of the way. That's, yeah. how, that's how my uh, old BMW was. It looks horrible. Day. That's how mine went. Check it's in neutral first. Nah, it'll be all right. You've got to put the key in the hole. Oh! It's got a key, it's got, it's got a key holder. It's not a keyless start. It's got a key holder. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crap, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where's traction? Do you want off off? Yeah, off so we okay. like, can feel that open there you go. diff. Okay, yeah. Wow, the gear throw is so It's long. got that long throw, isn't it? Wow. It's not wibbly wobbly like your E46. No, but... it's just long. <laughs> it's, like, it's like stirring with a golf club. Wow. <laughs> Third gear. <laughs> <laughs> it literally is so long that I wonder if you can get a short shifter for it. You've got to be able to. It's smooth, like the gears changes are smooth, they're just long. Yeah, it? You, oh. it takes like four years to change gears, you've got to like change the postcode, the gear knobs in. <laughs> what are these meant to be? 300 brake? 300 brake out of the box. So yeah. technically, it, this should be slower than my M3. It should be, yeah. But bear in mind, it's, but it's, got, without, it's got an intercooler and downpipes on it, so it might be mapped. I don't know. Oh no, it's quick. That felt quick. No, that felt quick. That felt a lot quicker than my M3. Oh, that's loads better than yours. <laughs> oh, 
Well, the gear changes are smooth, but yeah, it's long. You got a like DMO shift, didn't you? Yeah, proper. <laughs> no, this, yeah, this feels faster. So it could be more. It could. This it could. definitely feels faster than. The turbo cars are always like quicker than NA, even with the same power, aren't they? Yeah, like the NA is like the M3 just is the same all the way up. This has got like boost. Okay, maybe it's not as fast there. Like. <laughs> third, gear, third gear was the one. Third gear is the third gear was the one. I think it boosts around just over three k. No boost, no boost, and then okay. I'm it drives sort of like NA style. Though. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Really yeah. Like it's not like, like a mad boost. No, yeah. I've changed my mind now. It's not that quick. No, it's not. It's it not just felt quicker in gear one and two. <laughs> it don't blow your socks off. <laughs> Smooth though, like it's not like knocking or like it ain't a nail, is it? I, no. thought, I thought it would be like a it's bit crapper. Power. Yeah, it's good. It doesn't even wheel spin, does it? <laughs> Maybe that's a sign it's slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, how many miles it done? 123. It does not feel like it's done that. Like it's, doing this, it's literally doing the same mileage as the M3. Oh, is it? Yeah. This is loads better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to race them. I think we should. Yeah. I think they do need to have a race. You're going to get smoked. I probably would, I <laughs> First and second, like, I'm definitely getting smoked. We'll do a roller for Your you. fourth gear is like a... We'll do a roller. Yeah, ro a roller might be good. Well, quite in here, though. Like a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Will it? <laughs> that dropped me phone. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the lights. I pressed the volume. But... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we test these brakes? Got should it. we do a brake check? Oh, hang it on. You Jesus <laughs> Christ, they're good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My neck hurts. <laughs> <laughs> they're insanely good. They're better than like... Yeah. Flipping yeah, hell! They're, they're, I think they're the best brakes I've had on a car. Oh my god! You could send this like 100 mile out on the motorway and a child walk out <laughs> and, you and would, just not stop. You would, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to touch the brakes. That's the thing. They're, they're do not. They're sound. Good. Flipping hell! I think the body of the car went that way. It like, <laughs> yeah, just shifted the chassis. <laughs> <laughs> they are sick. Do you think steering's heavy though? Yeah, but it feels nice. Yeah. It's like if you if you drove the M3, there's no response to the steering. Oh, is it? It's just like you turn like that and it's like steering a washing turn, machine. Yeah, you could turn like that and still be going straight. It's, there's no response in it at all. But this is like yeah, I actually quite like it. it needs that sound, doesn't it? It needs sound. I'm certain if it's been mapped, there's something not right. Like it's definitely got like a boost leak or something because it's like. If it's mapped with an intercooler, it should be like 370, 380, something like that, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. defo ain't that. No, it's nowhere near that because I mean, what Liam's S3 is like 300, Liam, and that feels rapid. Yeah. But we think that could have had a map. That's definitely mapped. <laughs> definitely, yeah. But rate it out of 10. Oh, style, give me points out of 10. Right, style, five. five well, it just looks like a normal one series diesel. Okay, okay. There's nothing, there's no, nothing sporty about it apart from the brake. Okay, okay. That's why I got a five, not four. Okay, fair enough. Um, the handling. Eight. Eight, eight it's for not handling. bad for no. stock. Well, I presume it's stock. It's, it's, yeah, I think so. It's a bit wishy-washy on the back, I think, at high speed, but. Yeah, no, it felt sound. Okay. Um, stock car. Engine. Engine. 7.5. 7.5, what? Well, six cylinder gets extra points. <laughs> and two turbos, like, that's a lot of extra yeah, points going it, there, but. It feels like it should be more powerful. Okay, then brakes. Good 10 out of 10. It's a solid 10 out of yeah, 10. So that's an overall it's rating. A good score. Let's go for an overall rating out of 10, as it is. Overall rating out of 10, it's a 7. Is it worth a subscribe? It's worth a subscribe. <laughs> it's worth a click that subscribe button to make it an eight out of 10. There we go. After it looks like a 1M. It's gotta look like one of them. I don't know. I think we can go a bit more mad. Okay, maybe it, it, you should just make it into a Let's take M2. It. Okay, yeah, M2 it. M, M2, <laughs> M2 135i. <laughs> With the new facelift. Okay. Headlights. Let's do it. Let's go, should we, should we go do it now? Oh, this is good. 
What's up picking out, man? <laughs> so I think the 135i has the MA seal of approval, but it's up to you guys now to make this car an eight out of 10. You gotta smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video and I'll catch you next time.